It's so simple, it's a joke. All you require is two apples. Look in front of me here, I've got the powerhouses. This is the daddy of superfood. So many wild animals depend on nothing but green leafy vegetables. Remember, we wanna make sure that these taste good and do you good. Here we go, the juice. We good? You ready? I love it, babe. Let's go. Oh, this is awful. Ah! Jesus. Please tell me it's done. I don't know. Do you know what? 28 days on juice of piece of cake, getting blood taken, no, no. <laughs> Am I still alive? <laughs> so, John, he's going to pee in the cup now. <laughs> the hardest part, I think, about what we just did, Al, if I've got to be honest, was. It's one of those, isn't it? I'm 52 years of age anyway. Um, even at my best, I haven't got a 20 year old body anyway. So you don't want to, it's one of those. So you, you really, and I thought, well, I'm doing this anyway. And I, I, I'm not people phobic and it is what it is. And, um, but yeah, going in my pants. So <laughs> you have to do that. You feel, you feel a little bit exposed. Can you just turn to the side? Do you know what? I knew I'd gained, obviously. But you don't need scales to tell you that you're not in the position that the that you should be in. Well, actually, I'm in the perfect position I should be in for this uh, mini documentary. When I got on and I'm looking down, I'm thinking, what is that right now? It, it took me back a bit, but in a in a good and a bad way. The good way, obviously, is for the documentary. But it's astonishing to see, remarkable even to see, how quickly, especially over the age of 50, the body is susceptible to a lot of damage. I mean, you think about when you're young and you'd go out till four in the morning and you'd wake up at seven for work and you get through the working day. And, and <laughs> when you're 40, you're not doing that. And then the, the idea just started to roll. And I went, I'm just going to eat a load of crap again to illustrate the cost of not eating well. I can't start from a healthy place. I've got to supersize myself. Or if I'm going to do that a little bit, I might as well do it a lot. I might as well turn it into a mini documentary. And here we are. I, I think, I think I'll pop this back on now. I think, I think it's worth, it's amazing. Do you know what though? It's astonishing, isn't it? It shouldn't be a surprise that you get particularly ill very quickly and you become overweight very quickly. But it was a shock to me because I hadn't really thought it through and I thought, well, I gained a, you know, a few kilos or whatever, but I didn't think I'd gain 12. I don't think. Wow. Even my breathing, I was badly asthmatic before. I didn't think it would start to constrict my breathing. But then you've, you've, got, you've got an extra 12 kilos on you. I mean, it's better. It's trying to keep that stuff away from your organs. Of course, it's going to affect it in some negative way. Lethargy, I feel horrible. I genuinely do. I feel I, I'm not myself. I feel, I just feel big. Where is it? What do we got, 126 over 90? Yeah, yeah 126 over 90, that should be a lot better. Napoleon Hill, 1953. Whatever the mind can believe and conceive, it can achieve. My mum hammered that home to me. For the first time ever in our history, come the beginning of 2020, that went out the window because we were no longer in control of what we did. Somebody else controlled us. So I think that just took away people's desires, hopes, care. Yeah. I think that's what it was. That's what it took away. All of us. But look, if I've got my honest head on, I was not being brilliant myself. I was still juicing a little bit here and there, but I'd go like, sometimes I go days without juicing and stuff like that. And I thought, I've been doing this for over 25 years. If you work in a chocolate factory for 25 years, every now and then you're gonna go off chocolate. Same with juice. No matter how many years you've been involved in healthy eating or anything else, every now and then you go, oh, I can't face another juice. It's one of those things. You kind of end up looking forward to the junk. The combination of refined fat, salt, and sugar done in a certain way that triggered the bliss point. And that's why some people obviously find it difficult to come off. Now I've reached the point where I've, I have had enough. Hence the subtitle of this mini documentary. I genuinely needed a taste of my own medicine. And I want the vast majority of what I'm going to consume to be fresh fruit and vegetables and their juices. There's no taste of vision. This is really, really difficult to get across. You have to make this. 
Super Juice Me. Welcome to the big one. The 28 day of the daddy of all juice plans. And I'm not underestimating or underplaying what you're about to embark on. I've done it twice in my life, 28 days on juice. In fact, I once lived on nothing but juice for three months when I first started. I had nothing but carrot juice for three months. I was the juice novice. Uh, don't do it. I don't recommend anybody does that at all. It's actually insane. I spent very thin and orange. I remember that. But anyway, so I wouldn't do that again. But then when I started to really study the subject, you know, I knew I needed avocados and blends and, and you need the greens and the different colors and everything else. So I did it twice. Honestly, my adult life never felt as good as at the end of those 28 days. And so what I've tried to do with every single plan that I've devised is to make sure that it has every single vitamin, mineral, phytonutrient, amino acid, essential fatty acid, everything that you need. Anybody who plays the perfection game, but they're either miserable some of the time, or they're liars. I did it for seven years of what I thought was playing the per perfection game when I went from all junk and then I read over a hundred books on health and nutrition. So I thought everything was gonna kill me. So I was wheat free, dairy free, sugar free, gluten free, friends free, personality free. I was from Peckham, Southeast London, right? One parent family. So my mates, we did everything. I'm, not only did I smoke 40, 60 cigarettes a day, but we part when we was from Peckham, we puffed other stuff, we sniffed other stuff. I'm just being honest, this is what we did. And when we went to TGI Fridays, that was a restaurant to us. But when I went into these seven years of wheat-free, dairy-free, this, that, and the other, and I started to study nutrition, which is weird for somebody in a Peckham council place anyway. Can you imagine this? TJ Fridays, somebody comes along and I go, oh, can I have a main course salad if you do it? And where is the salad grown? Well, do you know what? I'm not being funny. I wouldn't be my friend either. So for seven years, although I was, I was playing the perfection game, there came a point where I thought, I used to eat so much junk. I used to smoke 46 cigarettes a day. You have all this junk and I'm still alive. I'm sure I can have a cheese sandwich. And so I just became a little bit more, what I call normal, but healthy normal. You know, cause some people watching this go, well, it's abnormal to have nothing but juices and blends for 28 days. And I say, yes, it is, but it's also abnormal to eat junk too. And it's abnormal not to exercise. So although yes, it's abnormal to live on nothing but juices and stuff uh, for, for 28 days, the things that people are consuming are completely abnormal. It's abnormal to be significantly overweight. It's abnormal to be overweight. We're the only creatures on earth that are overweight. You know, people go, oh, look at elephants. But look at all the elephants, they're all the same shape. You know, hippos, everything else, they're all the same shape. You look down the average high street, they're all the same shape. We're all over the frigging place. So it's not normal. It's not normal to have a medicine cabinet. We think it is. Why do we think it's normal to have a medicine cabinet? It's not normal. You, you don't see any creature in the world having a medicine cabinet. And they don't suffer with indigestion, even silly things, or headaches. How do you know? Have you ever interviewed a tiger? No, I haven't, but I'm guessing the average tiger, you know, he's not going, oh, I would chase the gazelle, but I haven't got it in me today. Well, I can have anything I want over the next month, which I can, really, I can't. I mean, I'm an adult. I could blow this in, I could cancel the documentary, but I know I don't want to. I know I want to do this because I can't afford not to do it. I'm not walking around like this for the rest of my life, I'll tell you that now. So I need to recalibrate. It's a half-time team talk for me, if anything, if, I, if I'm honest. I'm 52 years of age now. And, you know, I suffered severely when I was young with all kinds of addictions, a cover meta foot and skin disease called psoriasis. I mean, I, when you think about 95% coverage of psoriasis. And I had really bad asthma, heavy smoker, heavy drinker, very, very overweight as well. I can't afford for any of those to rear their ugly heads again in any capacity, in any way, shape or form. I've got little JJ, and to be honest, of course he plays a, a major part. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a relatively old dad, which I particularly didn't want to be. But one thing I do know is that you, you have to be there for them. You have to have the energy for them, not just be around. You can be around, you can, you can sit in a rocking chair and when I'm 70 and start watching tons of telly, and I'm still around, oh, JJ, how's your day today? Or I can actively be with him. I can go on holiday with him. We can go scuba diving together. We can go surfing together. We can go snowballing together. And you know, at 52, you know, I'm going to be older than, than many of the dads that are knocking around, but I want to make sure that nobody knows it. That's the key thing for me. I want to make sure that people just make an assumption that I'm the same age as all of them and I'm 10 years younger, even if I look about that, but my energy, because you, that's what it's about. It's your, it's your energy. So I can't afford to not have a massive reset, to get back on the, really back on the juice wagon, reset myself to where I, I have been for the majority of my entire life. I used to have psoriasis, hay fever, eczema, heavy smoker, heavy drinker. I come from a place where I was taking a pill for every ill, ointment on my skin to burn off the psoriasis. Nobody asked me what I was eating. 
Health surely comes from within. You clean the inside of your house, really clean it, deep clean, and then everything else gets better. So for me, a day in the life of is, so I'm gonna wake up, water, do a little bit of stretching, bit of yoga, but I'm more likely to get on a mini trampoline. I'll probably get that on the morning, little classical music in my ear, nice little wake up. Go on a walk, ultra ball, volleyball, trampolining. If the weather's good, then I'll play a bit of tennis. But an average day in the life should consist, obviously, of two thick juices, one in the morning, one in the evening, thin juices during the day. When I get on the scales, in 28 days later, if I haven't dropped a minimum of 20 pounds, then I didn't do it. And that's, I'm willing to put myself on the line right now. My prediction is, when I jump on those scales, it'd be 75 kilos. I think body fat, I, I can see that drop into teens. Contrary to what people say, I think muscle will increase. Breathing will be massively improved. And overall energy, I mean, it, it's almost guaranteed, unless, unless I fall off the wagon, which is not gonna happen. So here we are, day two. You'll notice that there isn't a day one video entry um, anywhere. Um, I um, was exhausted by probably six o'clock yesterday evening. I found the juices all right. That was, that was not a problem at all. I wasn't hungry for anything else, but I don't think there was any room left in my system to be, I'd eaten so much on the day before. If it was ridiculously easy, everybody would do it. And the thing is, is that although my mind was in the right frame of mind, which it was, I couldn't have done anything last, I mean anything at all last night. The novelty for the next few days, I think will, will take me through. Anyway, we'll see. So here I am, day three, put out a video yesterday, just a little one just saying, you know, I gave more than I thought, you'll see it on the documentary. Somebody here just on Instagram said, I have to say, having met you at Juicy Oasis, that you are looking a bit, dare I say, haggard. I mean, there's no one to hear that. Somebody else is going, wow, Jason, I've never seen you look so awful. <laughs> I mean, this is what bad food does to you. And it just got me thinking, those people that live with this all the time, even though, I know all the reasons why I've done this. It still gets to you, so God knows what it must feel like to anybody who genuinely suffers from overweight, obesity, and you get picked on. At least when I had my skin disease and was massively overweight, there was no such thing as social media. Because we're all human, no one wants to hear any of that. Even if you've done it as an experiment, do you want to hear, by the way, you look haggard? Haggard? I mean, that's a frigging word and a half, isn't it? Haggard. It's amazing what happens so rapidly. It's been, what, not even 72 hours at this juncture. And yeah, already, yeah, already feeling, feeling good, sleeping well. The bloatedness that I was feeling is already gone. Um, so yeah, a long way to go. I think the realization today is that it's gonna be a long journey. Even at a beautiful place like this, you're effectively in a juice prison, but a particularly beautiful juice prison, if you will. But it's so doable still at home, and that's the thing. It's easier here, but it's still, there's no reason why somebody can't do it at home. And already I'm three days in, and I'm, it's astonishing how quickly your body wants to heal. It's actually, it's, it's mind-blowing, really. I think the biggest irony of lockdowns is that during a health crisis, not one health minister mentioned health. And it's an interesting observation. They mentioned disease, but not health. 
it's worth pointing out. I mean, you can't deny it because it's a fact. 78% of people globally uh, that were hospitalised and or fortunately lost their lives with COVID even, 78% were either overweight or obese. But their slogans were, stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives. And health was never mentioned. Never mentioned. No, what are you eating? What are you drinking? And I'm still waiting to this day. Still never seen it. I was waiting, where's the slogan going to come on? Eat well, move well, save the NHS. I think all governments got it wrong. And I think they missed a monumental window uh, of opportunity that we will never have again. Why they are in a position to tell you what to do, well, then why didn't they say for the greater good of everybody else and great good of the health service? It's now your responsibility, imagine such a thing, your responsibility to actually take control of your own health. We'll help you. We're going to ban the big food companies until they change their recipes, until they change their formulas. They didn't do that. They go, right, how do we deal with this situation? We're going to close gyms. No, honestly, you look back, there's no rationale behind this. Somebody goes, well, I'm not going to a gym, I'll go to a park, open air. Park closed for health reasons. Gym closed for health reasons. You're like, go oh, I'll book on a health retreat. No, closed for health reasons. Oh, hang on, is there anything open? Yeah, McDonald's, Burger King, Pizza Hut. Well, I can't even be asked to go there. Oh, that's okay. Food delivery grew to its largest that it's ever been during the whole pandemic. Well, what were the main deliveries? Well, they weren't fruit and veg, I'll tell you that now, because people just were looking for anything for what they deemed because of the illusion, as a bit of fun. And big food have played a wonderful role in the way that they have put these apparent foods together. At the end of the day, there's not real money to be made in fruits and veg, because you can only have a certain amount and then you fall up. Like I'm on day three, I'm not hungry at all. And that's because, whereas just before I started this, I was overfed and undernourished, and now I'm nourished. And that's the idea, you need quality food, not quantity. I know I needed a, a reset and get back to basics. The basics that I know is to get at least 10 portions of fruits and veg into my system a day, whether via soup, a salad, a juice, a blend, whatever it is. Uh, it's said that you can eat and live on nothing but avocados. Now, I don't know how accurate that is. Um, I wouldn't want to live on nothing but avocados, to be completely honest. However, it's worth knowing that it has all the essential six dietary human needs. We have vitamins, we have minerals, we have the essential fats, we also have good protein, it's also some carbohydrate in there and some water. That's the six essential dietary human needs. And people get scared. They go, it's full of fat, Jace. Avocado is full of fat. They are full of good kind of fats. Yes, there's 40% fat, but your body will take what it needs and get rid of what it doesn't. Fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, seeds, lean proteins. What do you think fires your immune system? What do you think fires it? What do you think? A wonderful outlook on life. Uh, having a purpose. All of these things. Having friends, family, connection. All these things that go hand in hand. Uh, and these are the things that ultimately uh, bring in the light. And you go, actually, yeah, I thought the fun was in, the, in that junk food. The fun was in the bottle. The fun was in this. And you go, it's not, though, is it? And it never was. But you need a reset to make it happen. And if three days, you can start to feel this difference. Just within a matter of, of literally two to three days, one can only imagine what you're going to feel like in, in 28 days. Okay, so the morning of day eight. It's quite incredible what can happen in a week. I think the, the most noticeable thing is energy and breathing. I, mean, I had asthma for years. I mean, I was using the Ventolin inhaler 14, 16 times a day over 20 years ago. I didn't think that that would ever manifest itself or come back again. Uh, my breathing was uh, out of sorts for, for sure. And I got on a, a cross train at the beginning of the week and I managed to do um, <laughs> two and a half kilometers and that was all but then i got on yesterday day seven and did 12k 
but it's incredible. When you give yourself quality food instead of quantity, then you're not hungry, you've got the energy that you need. Uh, most people are overfed and undernourished, which I was just before starting this, this Super Juice Me. But yeah, one week in, um, I think I've lost a little bit of weight around the face already, I think, I don't know. So I don't know what challenges will come up over the next week, but I certainly feel on a juice high, there's no question about that. But there are three weeks to go. Well, here I am, day 10. Thought I'd uh, tap in. <laughs> I really struggled yesterday. Like, really struggled. The first three days was a bit of a struggle, I thought they would be. And I thought I'd just be on fire every day from then on. So it just shows it can just hit you at any given point. I was daydreaming of salmon. Just a nice piece of salmon. That's what I wanted. Oh, these are the times that you could easily break it. And I think if I didn't have all eyes on me, <laughs> I think I might. I think I might, that's a funny thing, you've got to stay focused. Anyway, at the end of today, be more than the third of the way through. I'll be glad when I'm doing a little video cam saying I've got uh, seven days left. <laughs> I'll be there. Anyway, third of the way through. Well, day 15 of Super Juice Me, one and a half. God, I want to eat. <laughs> I mean, there's no getting away from that. I want to eat something. This is where the hunger SOS comes in. Normally, we say you can have an energy bar or something like that. I'm staying 100% natural, which means that my hunger SOS, which I'm already salivating about, will be an avocado, just with a little bit of crap back pepper, a little bit of lemon juice, a nice big cup of peppermint tea. Key really is to keep your stomach full. But yeah, it does get monotonous. Of course it does. It's not normal to live on juice for 28 days. <laughs> Which is normal, we have teeth for a reason, right? But it's not normal to eat crap either on exercise, uh, which is what I did before as part of this experiment. So you're just countering the abnormalities, like putting your car in for a service. Can't keep it in the garage, but it drives a lot better after you've done the service. And that's what we're essentially doing. This is a, a mind and body juice service, if you will. And yeah, no one said it was gonna be easy. Anyway, yeah, if it encourages one person just to jump on this, then it would have all been worth it. Um, anyway. 13 days to go. So here we are, just um, we're on the final furlong. Effectively, I've done seven days three times over, so it's only one more time. You know, people say take one day at a time, it's such a stupid statement. You can't live your life any other way. I dare you to take one week today. It's an impossibility. Yes, indeed, seven days to go. <laughs> Guess what? Five days to go. Well, you know, so I didn't say just five days to go, which is what many people this morning were saying to me. You've only got five days left. 
Think about this, for most people, if you were starting now, and I say, right, you're gonna go on juices for the next five days. They go, Whew. they'd be a bit huffy. They're like, they, they psych themselves for those five days. It reminded me when I did the New York Marathon. By the way, if you are doing a marathon, uh, train for it. Yeah, rule number one, train for the marathon. Anyway, so I get to mile 20 somehow. There's a load of girls on the side and they goes, way to go, Jason, you're nearly there. I'm nearly where, where am I nearly? You tell me where am I nearly? I've got another six miles to go. And I've still got another five days to go, but already feeling I mean, disproportionately good. Problem is, when you feel this good now, is that you go, oh, well, it's good enough. You see, and this is the danger with the 28-day plan, I suppose, that you reach a point, you go, well, it's good enough. I've done, you know, compared to most people, and they do all that. No, this is a 28-day challenge, so I will continue with the 28 days. I just feel good, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's day 25. I've got to tell you, the important thing is to all have all your juices. Yesterday, I, I missed one of them and then I did 20K. And then this morning, I just missed my time having the juice. It's two o'clock in the afternoon now. And effectively, I'm, I've, I've only had a ginger shot and I've done 10K and I've taught the spinning 80 spin, which was freaking amazing, the 80 spin today. So I've gone a little bit off plan. Oh yes, uh, I got myself a tahini coca beanie. Normally that doesn't make a show in until the Saturday. If you look at my, not bothered. You see this is that if you look at it, I'm not even bothered. You've got to be flexible. You've got to listen to your body. Uh, the juice SOS is, you know, if you need an avocado, go and grab one. Need a banana, go and grab one. You need a tahini coca beanie. Oh, and it's perfect as well. It's not even slightly okay. It's absolutely perfect. That should lift me. So yeah, there's three days left to go. It's kind of weird. People say, well, what are you gonna have for your first meal and stuff? I haven't really thought about it. Salmon though. Salmon and salmon and salmon. I just want a piece of salmon. I'm already there. I've not, nothing else to say today. It's the penultimate day. It's day 27. There are less than two full days to go. I'm saying it like as a parent, it's actually all right. There's only one full day left, because uh, it's lunchtime. And there's my, well, what's left of uh, my lunch. Uh, I was gonna have the whole thing while I did the little video cam today, but uh, hunger got the better of me, uh, to be fair. And before you can uh, say super juice me, it'll be over, won't it? Anyway, that's the, that's the rest of my teeny coca beanie. Green juices later on. I did, I flip reversed it. I'm a rebel. Uh, right, where do we start the book? So, Life After a Retreat book uh, is here. Some of you have been before, you would have had the book. But we all arrive at different times. Uh, things change, everything always changes. There's new goals to be set. Can't believe I'm saying these words, but it is the final day, day 28. To be more accurate, it's the evening of day 28. Tomorrow, I can eat. I can get to my salmon that I've been dreaming about. Um, feels weird coming to the end of this. I don't know, it's kind of irrespective of what the results say. I, I know that it's been a phenomenal experience already. Uh, but tomorrow, it will be interesting to jump on those scales, get the bloods done, and see what the results are. Day 28, that's it, final one. Okay, help. Someone's taking my blood. I think you can talk for help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've only got eight pints. I'm sweat. I'm literally sweating. Okay, oh sorry. <sighs> la 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 la. Everybody's calm. I think she's taking eight pints because it's taking so long. What's going on? Oh, I believe that's it. Hopefully. Are we done? Ah. Oh. Amit Obrigada, ma. Yeah, I do feel relieved now. I'm relieved that I can eat again, and I'm relieved that that's over. And I'm relieved that I've dropped the weight. I mean, 
Come on. I mean, you know, I'm in the health industry. You haven't got to be the best football player in order to be the best football manager, but you've got to be able to kick a ball. So the thing that surprised me more than anything else is that, it's, uh, is that this really works. Now, it's one of those that you just go, well, you teach it, Jace, didn't you? No, I don't mean, that sounds like, like disingenuous in, in some ways, but it shocked the life out of me just how quickly that you can go from where I was 28 days ago to where I am today. This isn't slightly okay. It's disproportionate. It is night and day. It's not the same human in 28 days. Now bear that in mind. That's 28 days. This just proved the body wants to heal. Now I always said it, always knew it, but again, it comes as a surprise when you embody it to such an extent, you go, God, everything I've been teaching, it works, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, it's one of those I have to go, yes, it does, I knew it did, but you're like, but it really works. Yeah, the results were incredible. I lost 20 pounds, a huge amount of weight to lose. And I couldn't have done any more, right? So that's how it is. However, and there's a big however, because I've gained muscle mass. Fat takes up twice as much room in the body than muscle. So therefore, you can't be a slave to the scale. You can change body shape entirely and sometimes be about the same weight. So you can't, it's not all just about weight loss. I never check my cholesterol. So when I got my bloods done originally, and I saw that I'm, I'm in the... I'm in the danger zone of cholesterol. That was interesting to see that. But those figures are immaterial, really, because we're the only creatures on Earth that know our weight. You, you can only imagine a set of squirrels. Are they equivalent of squirrels' weight watchers? Oh, I wonder, where's my, what's my BMI? Keeping mentally and physically healthy and fit determines how old you are. That's with you, more than the chronological age. So JJ, here we go. Look, we're gonna put some stuff in here. This is the juice, all right? What do you want? Do you want apple? Okay, go on, put the apple in. Here you go. What else are we gonna put in? Lemon. Lemon? Oh, lemon's gonna be nice, isn't it? Broccoli. Broccoli. Spinach. Should we put some spinach in? Thank you. Okay. Oh, yes. Nice. Okay, turn it off. Look at this. JJ, you've just made a lovely juice. It's good? Yeah. I'm 52. I didn't want to be a, an old dad, and I've realized now I don't have to be. I think that's the I think that's the that's the one of the big take homes there. Yeah, I don't have to be. It needs this. Gin, yeah, but spicy. You don't like spicy, do you? No, but I, like I think for me, anything I can do to try and improve my health um, and stay fit, stay active, stay sharp, can only improve my relationship with the little fella. And I want to be somebody he looks up to and be around. I want to be around. <laughs> and I don't just mean physically, but to actually be around for them and jump on the surfboard with them. So yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Oh! High five, buddy. High five. Boom! Oh, there's no question. Absolutely no question. I'm back in the juicy game. The outlook now, it's one of those, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a, I mean, the future's bright. It's such a cliche thing. But it is. I cannot imagine that you could ever watch this mini film and not do it. Look, you're just 28 days away from potentially regaining your health. There, darling. I will all that. Oh. Oh. Oh, my days. Oh my days. Oh. Oh, it's better than I thought. I'm just having it by itself. Very nice.